Damon, how's your hole? Uh, it's clean. <laughs> um, I showered before I got here. Jordan, how's your hole? Exit After only. getting eaten by... Still exit it. only. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, it's when I want to. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Definitely. But I, I bought this... Um, My hole is fine for mm. a bottom. I have not pleaded in two days. Uh-huh. Okay. And how is it for you? You've been eating buffalo... No, he ate it. I gave it to him. So it's on fire, huh? I gave it to him. You got a buffalo chicken booty? No, I gave it to Curtis, but I did have broccoli. Oh, you gave it to Curtis. What is broccoli to you? you, Broccoli? It's a natural Mm. cleansing thing. Curtis, did you like the buffalo dip? Mm. Was it? It's pretty good. Quentin did his thing. He put his... Ass in that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, foot, foot, foot. I'm sorry. Foot, foot. Not, you don't need to convert every say. Okay, it's foot. excessive. Foot. Foot. He excessive. put his foot in it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hello and welcome to another episode of Gay Side Stories, where the gay shit goes. I am your host, Trilificent. I want to go through a couple of quick notes before we get into the show. First up, the show is now hosted by Pippa, and that's P-I-P-P-A dot I-O. I will still try to load the latest episodes on SoundCloud, but the rest are going to be hidden because... You have to pay to be able to upload and keep everything live. And since I'm switching services, I'm not going to be giving SoundCloud coins that may or may not change in the future. I don't know. However, the show will still be listed on Apple Podcasts, on TuneIn, Acast, Google Play Music, and Stitcher. And should be available using your favorite podcast apps. Hopefully, I can expand it up. Hopefully, I can expand a little bit in the future and get the podcast in a couple of other places. Speaking of, make sure you guys are using the hashtag GaySidePod when you're live tweeting or posting about the show on your social media. Another reminder, hashtag GaySideCulture. Remember, I was talking about this probably last week and the week before. I'm going to keep doing so until I actually launch the series. But the hashtag gay side culture series is basically going to be a collection of different people chiming in on what they think gay culture is and what it means to them. So if you would like to participate, please do so by reaching out via Twitter or email or leave a voicemail. And that's three minutes or less. All of that information will be in the show notes. Another reminder, the audience survey, you guys. First of all, let me say thank you to any and everyone that has taken the time to do that. I didn't realize that the survey was so long. I thought it was short, maybe like, I don't know, five to ten questions, but it's it's extensive. So anyone who has filled it out in its entirety, you are the real MVP and I appreciate you for everyone else. Please just set aside, you know, five minutes of your time to go through and do that survey to help me just get some metrics on the show. The link is in the show notes, but it's also bit.ly slash gay side survey. And that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash gay side survey. The link is also going to be on the website under the extras header. And thank you in advance. And real quick about the show, I know that you're probably wondering... Who were all those voices that we heard in the beginning talking about booty holes? Well, this episode is going to be more of a panel type thing than the usual episodes that I do with one guest or obviously just solo. So I want to say I hope that you enjoy the conversation and the rowdiness and apologies if the audio quality is not what you're used to. Um, I've never recorded with that many guests at one time, 
I've never recorded with that many guests in person at one time. So it's I'm going to put this under the growing pains column and hopefully you guys will stick with it and enjoy. So we have a full house for this episode and conversation. So let's just go around the room and everyone introduce themselves. Let's start with to my left. My name is Deja, also known as Quez, Q-U-E-Z. My name is Jordan, also known as Jordan.Toro85. And I'm Harold, also known as Peanut, Harold J09, and all social media. You guys remember Harold. He was on the show not too long ago, actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he is back, and he has brought his posse, and I'm excited. So represent let's... Dallas. Okay, sure. I represent the Bayou City. I was gonna say I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is mixed Houston, company. Texas. You have to yes. let's rain. We represent Texas. Let's right. let's, let's yes, get we're broad. Representing yeah. Texas. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's fair. Right. So let's kick things off with the school and life segment. <laughs> this is something that we highlight that helped us get through the past week, or maybe something that we're looking forward to. That is helping us get through the week. So could be maybe you're looking forward to a vacation or hanging out with friends. Maybe you are looking forward to a dick appointment. Whatever Ooh. it could be, you know. <laughs> so maybe some of us had those already. But, you know. Oh, <laughs> Jordan, why don't you start us off? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, you know, I actually was looking forward to this day. Actually, mm-hmm. um, meeting you, Curtis. You know. Representing H Town, um, just coming down, down. right. Yes. So yeah, I was. It's really just you know meeting up with my friends. So I was that got me through the week. Come on, camaraderie. Yes. Well, what got me through this week was Trillificent coming down to Dallas and hanging out with him. That's what got me through the week, and I'm happy to have him here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mine is more on a serious note. What got me through the week was uh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I had an I had an uh, injury. Oh no! Um, I had some I have some chest wall inflammation, but what got me through the week was while I was at the doctor, I had my physical done, all my blood work, and everything came back perfect. So awesome! That made things a lot better to get through this week. So um, that was it for me. Okay. okay. Well, I think that I have the same school in life as last week. You know, I was looking forward to this trip, and now I am mid-trip. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I'm having a blast. It just, you know, sometimes it just feels good to get out of your zip code. True. True. So, and Texas is big enough that you can still be in Texas and and do that. That's right. So, and. true. So, let's move on. I'm going to come, sir. Oh, Yeah. The Come Quick segment, I have two articles that I want to talk to you guys about real quick, and then we'll get into the uh, the meat and potatoes. So first up, the headline reads, A small Texas town just elected a gay mayor who marched in heels for Veterans Day Parade. Yes! So his name is Bruno Ralphie Lozano. He's 35. He's the mayor-elect of Del Rio, and it's a town in southwestern Texas along the border with Mexico. Ralphie is a U.S. Air Force veteran, and his campaign focused on modernization of infrastructure and bringing tourism back to the town, which he said dropped off because of the Mexican border's quote-unquote unfair reputation as unsafe. Uh, According to the San Antonio LGBTQ publication out in SA, his sexual orientation did not play a large role in the campaign. Uh, That's fair. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. And last year, he marched in Del Rio's Veterans Day Parade in high heels. And the only backlash he received was a meme on Facebook that called him a faggot with AIDS. Oh, Jesus Christ. What is it, the 80s? I mean, come on. I'm like... Seriously. So I want to say shout out to Bruno Ralphie Lozano, yes. now the mayor elect of a border town. Great. And I hope he does great things. I hope he wears his heels to work. Please work, bitch. <laughs> I hope he does the Beyonce walk into his office yes. every day. Yes, yes. And 
I hope you can run from the drug cartel <laughs> in them hills. No, well, I don't know if he's any if he's anything like that lady from Jurassic World, he'll be fine. Because mm. she, she, if you can run from dinosaurs in hills, okay. you can run from anything. Mm. That's true. Mm. So, well, I, you congratulations know, to yeah. him. Congratulations to him. Absolutely, congratulations. Okay. So the next article's headline says. Quote unquote, ex gays humiliated in DC when no one showed up for their big rally. What? Yeah. So ex gays. Ex gays. So the Freedom March was attended by 36 people and it was held by the organization Voice of the Voiceless, an ex LGBTQ group that has advocated for conversion therapy on college campuses. Mm. <sighs> oh, yeah, I don't miss those days of college. Yeah. So yeah. the march was an quote opportunity for those of us who have a new life with Jesus to come together in fellowship and praise Him for the love and grace available to everyone who seeks it, and to testify publicly of the life changing grace available to leave the LGBT identity for something greater. Bless their hearts. Girl, fuck you. Right. (laughs) Everybody drags Jesus into everything. I mean, it's all about like loving who you are and Jesus is, you know, you you just... Jesus is supposed to be love. At least that's what I learned when I used to Speak your own truth and just go with what's in your own spirit. I mean, why conform to what society is like you know well Mm -hmm. i would say to that people covet acceptance and this is just another Mm -hmm. ugly version of that uh so the speakers included ex-transgender activist jeffrey mccall post shooting survivor who i mentioned previously on the show luis ruiz and mind. quote unquote activist mommy, which uh, okay, Elizabeth Johnston, who claims that schools are forcing kids to learn how to have anal sex. What? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And yeah. this is public schools. I, I don't know. I oh, didn't. God. I don't. Sweet I, Jesus. I didn't want to give Google the task of telling me who this person was because clearly they are lost. I didn't even know how to use a pencil sharpener. <laughs> and so, <laughs> well, Ain't no sex. I know the schools I went to. I wasn't even taught to diaphragm a sentence. So, it's, I mean, it just depends, you know. You know, as it's, much as like sex but, ed uh, is not even really taught, and so how are they learning how to have anal sex? Yeah. I learned why, why anal sex even? from watching my dad's porn in the eighties. But we shouldn't. I mean, that shouldn't even be a topic. And I mean, I, I'm I'm all for sex education, but. I think that should be left to the parents. I don't think public schools should be teaching kids about that. That's just my personal opinion. Right. About I agree. Sex in I mean, you, well, I just think that's up to the parent. You know, I don't think that's... Or the be. individual. Or, yeah. I think, <clears throat> you know, I don't know if you guys remember back up, you know, back in the 90s and 80s, they used to send out slips with, um, what teachers would send out slips to their students to give to their parents if they wanted to be you know, handled with corporate punishment. And I don't know if you guys remember that. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. I think that should be the same thing with sex education. Well, I mean, that's fair, but I, this is assuming that there is any form of sex ed being taught at all. Mm-hmm. You have to understand that these mm-hmm. kind of things, they, for lack of a better term, make things up. So it could very well be that schools are not teaching any type of sex ed, but she's like, well, that article in that newspaper that is not part of anybody's school curriculum had a whole breakdown of anal sex. So they teach it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, this is not even in the school. Now you're, you're making up stuff mm-hmm. so that you can have a platform to yell. Well, yeah, but I think that's coming from someone's agenda. That shouldn't be taught in school. That's just my personal opinion. I mean, kids yeah. are learning things online now. And I think, in school, I think if they want to ask questions, I think the teachers should be able to answer those questions if they have questions based on what they're reading and seeing online. We're in a whole generation of 
social media to where people can just look online and find whatever they want and like kids they don't need their teachers telling them about getting fucked in the ass if they have the desire to get fucked in the ass they can look online and find tips to but so let's let's re- let's focus because the focus of this is not what this lady's platform right. is. This is about this rally that they had. Mm-hmm. So the ex LGBTQ movement has a deep sense of victimhood. Mm-hmm. Currently, no state bans adults from seeking conversion therapy. There are bans in about I want to say ten states and various cities that ban conversion therapy for minors, but not for adults. So if you Wake up one day and you decide, I don't want to be gay no more. I like women's, women's, mm-hmm. women's. Mm-hmm. Then you are free to do whatever right. it is that you want to do. No one's stopping you. So that's that why they're saying this too. is yeah. steeped in victimhood. Because no one's stopping you from doing what you want to do. But there's this idea that if what I want to do is not popular or if people aren't talking about it, if it's not well known enough, then we must be oppressed. And that's not the case which is why nobody showed up to this rally because well who cares Who's no one it? exactly I mean, no one cared do what you want to do, do y'all grown y'all look grown yeah. 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 so the last point says groups like voice for voices portray conversion therapy as a science based endeavor and not primarily religious however when the rally turned into a march from the national mall to the white house the rhetoric became exclusively christian and the participants broke out in christian songs I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> like Christian songs, groundbreaking. Would they sing Amazing Grace? Probably. Well, you know, this <laughs> is uh, this is a you know, this is a um uh what's the what, what was what told? Um a Christian nation. This was founded on Christian this nation was crowned on Christian principles. So I can see why that happened. Was it? You know? Yeah, the fi- the founding fathers were Christians. They yeah. well see and that's you know what? Uh, but yeah, I don't even want to get into it. You know, but yeah. I don't want to talk about them old white men. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Wearing so, wigs. Right. <laughs> gay culture. Yeah. Makeup. United States of wigdom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, there's actually a product called the wigs. Yeah. That too. Wigs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it sounds like an like a exorcism type of situation, the mm-hmm. whole conversion thing. But uh, I mean, I think uh, that is the idea you know, they want to exercise that, I don't know, demon or whatever they call it that is making them gay versus coming to that ultimate conclusion that this is who I am. But, yeah, you know, you in general, we, we can't tell people what to do with their lives. So it is what it is. Sure. So let's get into the main topic, you guys. I know y'all are... So excited to talk about this. The main topic is based off of this article. It was an Ask Adam article, and the writer's name is Adam D. Blum. Mm -hmm. And it says, Ask Adam, why are gays obsessed with being perfect? So before we get into the points from the article, I want to ask, do you agree or disagree that gay men are obsessed with perfection and or being perfect? Yes, I do agree. I totally agree. I agree to an extent. It's it's more about fitting in. Mm. And sometimes, even if you are trying to fit in, like imperfection is a way to fit in because there's a group of of, of gay people who are like into really like bigger guys, obese guys. And I mean, that's that to me is not really going the extra mile to be perfect, but in another sense, it's kind of being perfect, being perfectly unperfect, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, I agree. Kind of playing off what you said, I think perfection looks different to everyone, and it mm-hmm. feels different, and True. there's a different pursuit. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, like there's guys who like my stretch marks on my tummy. And there's some guys who don't are repulsed by it. So, like you're saying, it's an out of beholder. Yeah. Yeah. So, what kind of experiences, if any, have you guys had with perfectionism, both internally and externally? So, 
what I mean by that is, do you guys have any struggles with yourself in terms of perfectionism? And then what maybe has been impressed upon you by other people outside forces? Ooh, I think as humans, we all battle with that, you know, and we're going to constantly battle with that. I think that I have always had, you know, struggles with imperfections and like being perfect. And yeah, it's just one of those things that you know. I think it's something that, you know, that starts with puberty, you know, or even when you're a kid. It's just I think that's something that's gonna always be there. That the human condition, as far as you know, imperfection. Mm. I know I'm not perfect. I'm a pretty much take me as I am type of person. Come on, but MJB. <laughs> for me, it's very, um, it's it's the it's the cliques in the gay community that mm. always kind of destroy me. And I think it's, especially being in Texas, it, I, I kind of feel like as a, as a black man, I feel like the flavor of the month a lot mm. of the times. I can't change my That's race true. and I would never want to change my race yeah. ever. But, um, but sometimes you kind of feel like, well, well, damn, like, you know, what, what does it take for me to kind of mm -hmm. fit into this type of situation? It's like, you don't really want to fit in, but you do want to be accepted. Yeah. Everybody wants that. Mm -hmm. But, um, that for me is it when it, when it comes to perfection or, yeah. or whatever, but, um, personally, I, recently came to this conclusion that I'm the kind of person that if it's not perfect, if it's not going to be perfect or as close as humanly possible as I can get, now I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's my own internal struggle. And I would say externally, the best example I could give is, and I think a lot of people can probably relate to this, and that is looking perfect putting uh, giving off that perfect persona and I, for me it's family mm -hmm. so it's a situation where my mom and my stepdad were more con were so concerned with the outside uh, appearance and how people perceived us that perception so it's like it could be chaos inside the house, but when we go outside the house, when you go into the world, Lights, camera, you need to, I don't want people thinking that you have roaches at home or that you <laughs> don't eat food or that you, your clothes are not clean. You know what right. I mean? So th that, those are probably more examples for me personally. And also I think as gays, we're, we're, we, we have the luxury to focus on ourselves. We don't, most of us don't have children. Of course, we don't have wives to take care of families, so a lot of our our disposable income and our attention is really on ourselves a lot of times, you know, and also how fuckable we are. Excuse my French, but <laughs> we rate that as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. Okay. So the article says being perfect is one way to manage being an outsider in your own family, school, city, or country. Feeling like an outsider is a pretty typical experience for young gay people. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the author of this article is a therapist. And he gives four examples. I'm hoping that the names were changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go. Let's go through those examples and discuss them a little bit. So the first one is Arturo. Arturo believes his marriage needs to be perfect in order to survive. He thinks that because he and his husband don't have kids, there will be no pressure to stay together if they hit a rough spot. Or if the sex isn't mind-blowing, he worries his husband will want to open up the relationship and that will ruin it. Hmm. What do you guys feel about Arturo's plight? Ooh. In the... In that's a common I think Very that common. one is the most common issue that gays face because you know growing up I always heard the old queens tell us eventually you're gonna get an open relationship monogamy doesn't work for men very long no it doesn't so <laughs> that right there kind of speaks to the to the pew you know 
I agree, but I would say because this is a gay conversation, we mm-hmm. can have a little bit more nuance, but this is, I think, typical for people in general being in relationships. How often do we see in the media or even amongst our friends, women who are insecure about their marriages? True. If the marriage is not perfect, they worry that it's going to collapse. Mm-hmm. How many instances, and you know, I don't mean this to, or don't say this to sound shady or anything, but how many instances have we seen of a less than perfect marriage mm-hmm. and being the opposite, you know, right. they try to bring a child into it to hopefully, hopefully fix it and present that perfect family structure. I don't think it's just right. Right. a gay thing, but because it's amongst us, I like right. the example that you gave Jordan of, Thank you. you know, the older queen saying, you know, eventually monogamy is going to right. clock out right. and go right. home, yeah. put their feet up. Mm-hmm. And now you're stuck in a situation where, what do I do to save my relationship or save my marriage? Because I don't want right. it to be open to right. the world. Yeah. Um, this is why I always say, don't just get into a con- uh, relationship. Make sure you discuss what kind of relationship you want in front. But exactly. oh, that, that yeah. you know, is assuming that people have done the work and know the that answer. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is Kai. Kai believes he must reply to every email and text from colleagues and friends within 10 minutes or he'll lose his job or his friends will dump him. He checks his phone at all times, even in therapy sessions. That's definitely excessive. Obsessive. Mm-hmm. Obsessive Major and excessive. Majorly obsessive, correct. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I... This podcast... <laughs> <laughs> You know, put all my damn business out there, but <laughs> no, it's I, I would be lying if I said that at some point in my life I didn't have that that struggle with wanting to be the perfect friend, so mm-hmm. that people would always reply to my yes. texts and they would always yes. answer my calls and yeah. they would invite me to the cookout mm-hmm. and they would want to go out to the club or whatever the no not the club because I don't like the club but whatever the case may <laughs> I be I don't either yeah. um, so I, I this one probably hit me the hardest mm-hmm. because with my specific situation my friends are my family work is a different because you know I don't, I don't like to be bothered at work like I want to get my job done mm-hmm. and get my money and go home I don't like right. a bunch of the foolishness and extra and yeah. No, uh, yeah. say no to coworkers. <laughs> um, but as far as friends, like I said, because I don't, I at this point in my life, I have virtually no relationship with any of my family, save for one cousin. So my friends are that, and I don't want to present something that's gonna make them not want to, not want to fuck with me. Mm-hmm. To be mm-hmm. blunt about it. Um, but what about you guys? How how do you feel about Kai's situation? Um, I uh, again, you know, it's just another, you know, attempt to be perfect. Um, I think with him, he's trying to be a people pleaser, mm. and that's a condition that we do pick up mm-hmm. along the way as we grow and get older. I agree. I I can resonate with that. Yeah, I agree too. But I, I put that phone down. I mean, people just have to understand <laughs> that I have other things mm-hmm. that I have to do. Yeah. And I'll get back to them when I get back to them. As long as I do get back to them, that's that's how I am. Some of you guys know I don't mm-hmm. always respond to y'all's yeah. texts <laughs> right away. <laughs> but yeah. I will respond. And that's that's the important thing that I do. Eventually. Eventually mm-hmm. respond. Right. Now, if it's an emergency or something, you can call me. I yes. picked up the phone sometimes <laughs> on occasion, mm-hmm. but I I'll pick up if I can. But right. I don't I don't sweat that. Right, right. I don't me sweat either. it. Yeah. I don't either. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. So let's move on to Joshua then. <laughs> so Joshua goes to the gym every day to maintain his perfect body. When he occasionally misses a day, he becomes anxious that he'll never find love. Woo! Preach, preacher. When he misses two days, he gets depressed. 
Um, I think this is probably the most widely held version of perfectionism that mm-hmm. a lot of gay men face is that we, our, the outer package has to be perfect. You know, we need to be in this certain weight class. We need to look a certain way. Our skin needs to look like this. We need to wear the right clothes and all of those things. Um, but it's it's interesting to me the direct correlation to love and it being I'm not being I'm not pursuing perfection to satisfy my own need for it I'm pursuing perfection because I'm looking for something outside of myself true if that makes sense it does and I think with that I know this might be a little gauche for lack of words but just the fuckable right you know yeah I mean, that's I mean, the whole reason you yeah. go to the gym and you pump iron because yeah. Sometimes, we all know, you know that the gay community as a whole is very superficial. True. Now, that's not to say and that's not to sweep under the rug the, the sex of the gay population that are into different things that are not into the boy next door or not into the jock or not into the, the athlete yeah. and the gym rats and... Mm-hmm you know the model perfect but i think we like i said we can all agree you think about think about the representation of gay men in the media Mm -hmm. how often are those representations abs Mm -hmm. pics right a smile think about club flyers that you see Mm -hmm. unless it's something specific like uh, like something to do with big boys Mm-hmm. Every club flyer is going to be a fuck boy, yeah. a fuckable mm-hmm. boy. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. that mostly mm-hmm. held conception is that perfect body is mm-hmm. is what it means to be gay, and everyone else right. is like, "Well, you need to get on board." And you know that's why I I, I say that a lot that. There's a lot of gays that just, they hate anything that's not that. Yeah. You know, because you look at, like, they could they could have someone sitting right next to them that's a big boy. Mm-hmm. And that's their friend and everything. But let Kanye put on 10 pounds and it's, oh, he fat, da 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 mm-hmm. and, you, and you're just looking like, really? Yeah. You know what I mean? So They become mean girls. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, I yeah. will admit that when my doctor told me that I couldn't go to the gym because of my injury, it, mm-hmm. I wanted to curse him out because that's my time. It's not mm-hmm. necessarily, I don't go to the gym to, to get laid. I, I go to the gym because that's, <laughs> that's my yeah. time to focus on me, to get rid of whatever I've, I've been going through that day or that week. Mm-hmm. But, um, even so, I mean, I've, I've lost weight, but, what I have been attracted to, they don't want thin, smaller guys. Like, they want beefy. Everybody's talking about being thick and everything. Sure. And I'm like, well, yeah, well, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to just, I'm trying to bring my cholesterol down. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to make, you know, That's I'm trying real. to right. keep, my, keep my glucose levels. Right. Them triglycerides are right. so, yeah. You know, and y'all yeah. talking about thick. Everybody yeah. want to be thick, but thick ain't always healthy. But there's consequences to that. It depends yeah. on the thickness. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the person who's yeah. wearing. Yeah. Yeah. I True. agree. Okay. So the last one, Sanjay. Sanjay is constantly productive. Not a second is wasted. When he showers, he brushes his teeth and does his physical therapy exercises. He must have a big old shower. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He over-prepares for routine business meetings. What do we feel about Sanjay? Perfectionist type A. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I I would say. Um, He can't be in his own thoughts. He has to constantly be moving. Mm Mm-hmm. I would say that's definitely a typical. I think mm-hmm. when most people think of someone trying to be perfect, right. that's that like Constant besides a perfect outer exterior, like we just talked about with Joshua, Masanje is. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the 
rise and grind people. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of yeah. the I'll sleep when I'm dead people, which yeah. I've said this multiple yeah. times. You do not sleep when you're dead. You're dead when you're dead. Right. That's right. Also, that's true. sleep is very important to be Your healthy. Health. Yes. You know, that's why y'all here looking crazy and, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want to get into the rest of that. But, you know, <laughs> I just want to say sleep is important, okay? Yeah. For your mental health. You For know? your overall health. Overall, overall Like, I will, yeah. like, perfect example, when I don't, when I get into a rut where I'm not getting enough sleep, I instantly get sick. Mm-hmm. Like, I cannot function mm-hmm. without getting enough sleep. Mm-hmm. My immune system is like, I don't know what it is that you're doing, mm-hmm. but you got us mm-hmm. fucked up. <laughs> and I would get sick. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Right and I now. think people conflate not needing as much sleep with sleep means you're being lazy. Right. And right. it's like, just because you only need mm-hmm. three hours of sleep, right. that doesn't mean that mm-hmm. you are somehow outworking me because right. I take the time and I build my right. schedule to get as much sleep as I require. Right. But I think people like that is trying to run away from something. That's you know, fair, but yeah, that's, that's my opinion. That's fair, you know. Okay, so we have any other thoughts about these four examples? No, they're all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, they are seeing a therapist. So. Are they? Are they getting help? A I believe a therapist. Okay. Like I said, I think this right. article was written by a therapist, and okay. he's given examples right. for the sake clients, of this article. Maybe past yeah. clients. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it goes on to say, all these men started with therapy with complaints of being tired and unhappy, mm-hmm. even though their lives looked great on the outside. As we uncovered a few layers, each man came to see what drove his need to be perfect, to manage the unconscious shame that comes from growing up in a world that found them pathetic for being gay. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that is, I feel like without having more context about the individuals, that's a little bit of a reach. Mm -hmm. It's reaching, yeah. Um, a little bit and I feel like this person that wrote Adam uh, Mm -hmm. Russo he had something that he wanted to write he wanted to cite examples Mm -hmm. but the examples are not really fitting where he's going with the article so um, it moves Mm -hmm. on to say how did these men recover and bring more relaxation and joy into their lives so let's go through the steps, shall we? Okay. Yes. yes, please. Their first step was to acknowledge that they had bought into the false teaching of their culture. They discovered that they believed the cultural myths that feminine qualities in men are bad, that gay sex is dirty, hmm. that men can't be trusted, or that being straight is best. Hmm. So again, I'm going to reiterate what I just said in that this analysis does not fit the examples that he gave. I didn't get anything from those examples that they were struggling with all of those things. You know, you have someone, yeah. a specific right. example. I'm struggling with my marriage. Right. I'm right. struggling with, I can't put the phone down mm-hmm. because I feel like I have to reply immediately versus this is overarching gay is bad. So well, that's why I'm pursuing right. perfection without more context i'm not mm-hmm. saying that this could not be true mm-hmm. but it doesn't fit the context that's presented but i think those guys those are issues people do with universally exactly whether you're mm-hmm. gay straight exactly. bisexual pedophile whatever it's just what whoever <laughs> you know it's just it's overall people not deal with it. yeah i just had to put it in there i was yeah. on a road that's like so. pedophile is like what yeah. school zone am i going to move yeah right but, but they <laughs> but some deal with that too believe it or not but anyway you get the gist but yeah so i, I mm. will say though that these things that are presented in this first step I think it's fair to say that those are things that mm-hmm. a lot of gay men struggle with. So the examples, gay sex is dirty or uh, men Both can't be trusted. Well, I haven't heard that in a long time. Gay sex is dirty. Yeah, I mean, maybe the... That, that gets me like, 
maybe years the ago. author is dating himself. You know, maybe he's just like be. stuck in the past. And, but, but like you said, they're not letting her. Yeah, you. but mm-hmm. that game that yeah. men can't be trusted. We literally just well, talked about that. I We've been talking that. about that's, that. That's kind of all night. That's shit. Yeah, that's <laughs> men can't be trusted. Or that yeah. being straight is best. We just talked about it in right. that article of mm-hmm. ex LGB voice of the voices, and it's like you literally have a voice. Mm-hmm. It's just that no one cares to listen. That's yeah. not the mm-hmm. same as being voiceless. Yeah. Right. Um, feminine qualities in men are bad. I think we can all agree that in. General and some cultures, men. some races. Now let me stop. But yeah, I mean, um, yeah. I feel that way. I feel Talk like about it. You know, with <laughs> not all, not all, not all, but I feel like a lot, a lot, <laughs> enough, enough. <laughs> yes, um, white Americans, white men, they get away with being feminine. They can get away of not really being hypersexualized or hyper masculine mm-hmm. like blacks and some Latino circles that we have to portray. You know. And I've talked to this with a really good friend, you know. So, okay, but I could be wrong. But that's what I've seen. And that's fair. Yeah, I agree with you on that. So it says their second step was to feel some righteous anger about these cultural teachings and their destructiveness. They felt empowered by their anger. I think that that's fair. I think that that's a step in unlearning. And deciding that you no longer want to live by whatever cultural mm-hmm. or societal pressures that you feel. You know, you get angry and you say, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go against the grain. I think that's right. pretty typical, actually. Right. Right. That, you know, I'm not I'm not a typical gay man. I'm going to live my life the way that I want to live. That's, I feel like a lot of feminine men... That's something that they come to. It may not be necessarily laced with anger, but I think the progression is is fair. But I find it interesting because it's like, why do, why do you have to like, why does it have to be your identity just because you're feminine? You know, like why can't you just be you and be feminine? Why does it have to be a point? Like remember, like again, I I keep referencing back to the '90s and '80s because back then it's like. When you would watch a TV show and be like, oh, here's my gay friend. And he had a whole coming out story. You know? mm-hmm. Now it's just like, you sneeze, you see every, you know, it's not, it's not so mainstream anymore. But so with that, I feel like, yeah, you see a, a guy who's feminine or transsexual, but why does that have to be a point in who you are as a person? Just be you and go on, you know? Well, uh, I feel like people put too much identity into stuff that, that who, who cares? Well, you know? the thing with that that you have to realize is most people don't know their identity. So even that part of them, if that helps them understand who they are, it's, it's a necessary progression. And they hopefully will get to the point where it's like, I'm just me. Right. But most people... The people you think about straight people who don't have these struggles, they struggle with knowing who they are. Mm-hmm. But they have other struggles too. Exactly, they have yeah. other struggles. So mm-hmm. I'm what I'm saying, like, but for us, because yeah, it's a more mainstream, but we're still ostracized. Like, I, like I told Peanut earlier, we could literally hop in the car mm-hmm. and go somewhere and get out the car and get busted upside the head because someone thinks we're gay. Like that still happens. Yeah. Just because it's a little bit more visible, that doesn't mean that. There's been widespread acceptance. And as we were talking about earlier, environment. Where are you coming from? It could be internal because you were not accepted at home. Now you struggle with your identity because the thing about your identity that wasn't accepted Mm -hmm. became a big deal. So now you are immersed in that as being your full identity. And you have to do that work to realize, no, this is not who all I am, but it is a significant part of me and I have to figure out where that fits in the rest of what makes me as a whole. Yeah. Wow. I, I just want to say mm-hmm. that in the, in the gay community, I mean, a femme guy is a femme guy mm-hmm. in the straight community. They're metrosexual. It's mm-hmm. like metrosexual tendencies. But what I also want to say is I grew up, in the projects in New York, in Queensbridge, mm-hmm. I got teased a lot. And I don't even feel that I was 
that feminine growing up mm-hmm. at all compared to some others. But I got I got teased a lot, and then I kind of tried to be a little bit more masculine, only and then only to end up having to defend myself to other gay men about Mm -hmm. my femininity and my masculinity. And it was like, okay, well, now the straight people don't even care about how feminine I am. Now I'm worried about my own, my my own, own, yeah. Fellow. I I can't get a date because they don't feel I'm hard enough, I'm butch enough, or whatever. So, Or with me, I'm not mainstream. I'm not a mainstream gay. I don't care about pop music. Mm-hmm. I don't care about the latest trends and the latest lube or whatever. I mean, whatever, you know. So <laughs> the like, latest lube. I'm not a mainstream gay, so I'm not I mean, really accepted because of that. Know. Depending know? on what you got going on, you might want to be concerned with the latest lube. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I, like, you know? I, I don't, I mean, I can use spit. Unless I don't you, care, you know. Oh, it's just, that's okay. just me. Fuck yeah, water. That's masculine right there. Down to, uh, <laughs> Fuck water. I can do best. some organic coconut oil. It don't matter. Ooh. I don't care. You know, that's just me. But I see what you're saying, and I see what you're yeah. saying as well. You know, we all have our different issues what we go through. You know, I just don't play myself as a victim. You know. Well, so, yeah. so what I would say in response to that is, you you have to make allowances for people being diff- being in different places in their journey. You clearly are in a space mm-hmm. in your journey where you've already done that work. Right. Whereas a lot of people True. are not there. Yeah. You know, so you have to make that allowance for them to get to the point where you were. Mm-hmm. It could be that you've always been that way. It could be that you had to work to it. True. But and actually I had to work to it. Exactly. I gave myself so, a hard time for not being that way. So yeah. Yeah. So I totally you know, we have to mm-hmm. we have to see Give people where they are. Right. Instead of saying, well, I'm already here, so what's your problem? Right, right. True. So the third step said, the third step was to affirm that while they wanted relief from their perfectionism, it had brought them some good things in life. It allowed them to survive middle school or a homophobic parent, or it gave them financial security. This realization allowed them to be more compassionate with themselves. It avoided the common trope of beating themselves up for being mean to themselves. You know, I just have to say again that the, these steps are giving me something completely different than mm, the rest of the right, article. Right. So I'm, <laughs> I will admit that I'm struggling a little bit because it's like, what does this have to do with what you presented right. earlier? Um, but I, I, I think that it is fair to say that Maybe not. Maybe perfectionism is not the right word in this example. But you, you learn how to survive. You learn what front to put on so that you're not bullied. You learn what what to do and what to say, or what not to do and what not to say. When you were younger, yeah. mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. you don't have you know your bad right. orbs hide your head or your yeah. mom kick you out of the house or something like that. I think that's fair to say. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would label it or group it with being perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, just because perfect looks different and it could be True. I'm pursuing, like I'm trying to be as masculine as possible. Does that necessarily mean that I think being masculine means being perfect? No. But I know that being masculine keeps me from getting my ass beat. Oh, yeah, by the yeah. kids or by the kids you know, and trying to or, or by the parents by the by parents. parents. I was just gonna say that. Yeah, or even being turned away from different job opportunities at yeah. work. You just you know. Yeah, and I see some of that still to me. You know? I mean, you know, and I talked about this before. A good example. Mm-hmm. You think about you never see trans people working in corporate America. You know that right. that's the, the kind of that's the same thing where it's like. Then you get to a point where it's like, okay, I'm not pursuing that. I have to be me. Right. But a lot of us, yeah, we we put that. F- I I think there's a conflation here of putting on a front versus right. trying to be perfect. Right. Yeah. I don't I don't think that those are necessarily the same thing. Right. In this example that the article is giving us. Mm-hmm. So the fourth step and last step. <laughs> was to experiment with being just a little less perfect and to observe what happened. Uh, 
I would I would wonder how you go about doing that. If you're yeah. used to being perfect, how do you say, okay, today I'm going to be a little, a little less perfect? It's like stop. I feel like that's like with this, you know, quitting smoking or crack. You know, just <laughs> take it day by day, you know, drinking. Well, you crack, know, you get you withdrawals. Need a little bit more. <laughs> you I mean, with the process, more help. yeah, it's just you're going <laughs> to go through withdrawals. You're going to go through points, moments where you're like, oh, I need that hit, or I need that smoke, or I need the drink. I think perfection is similar, you know. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. Perfectionist anonymous class. Yeah. <laughs> or even if you're just binge eating, eat like a pig, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's overeater. You know, we all have, you yeah. know. Yeah. Just live in your own truth, people. Yes. I mean, because yeah. if you walk around trying to be this, trying to fit the status quo and you meet somebody, you're gonna have to keep up with the Joneses, and it's you're you're gonna be Amen. unhappy, and yeah. just be who you are. Mm-hmm. Period. Okay. Yeah. So the last point that I pulled out of the article, because he did go on to give updates, allegedly of them trying these steps, but again, these steps and these examples, I, I didn't see the correlation. It felt like I want to write this article about something specific. I don't really have any examples, so I just kind of mm-hmm. winged it, for lack of a better term. But he did go on to say, perfectionism is a defense. It's there to ensure that you are loved and safe. The good news is that you can... Uh, I can't talk. The good news is that you can be loved and safe and also be really imperfect. And I thought that that was very important to highlight mm-hmm. um, I agree. almost like the pursuit of imperfection correct yeah so the last thing that I want to talk about on this is getting a little bit more into the nuance of how do you think perfectionism how do you think it affects the gay or LGBT community and what can be done to combat it well um, I think it, it keeps gay men alone, personally. Like, I've met a lot of guys who say, I, I, I would ask, I'm like, well, why are you single? You know, you're hot, you're nice. You know, after you get, you break down that wall, you seem really cool. Oh, I'm just picky. I'm like, okay. You know, I, I get that a lot. I'm just picky, you know. It could be the way you chew, if, it, you know, some guys get turned off. If you... You know, wear the shoes they don't like. It could be a, a plethora of reasons why. But I think some gay men are just picky, you know. And that ends up with them being alone. You know, because they want everything perfect. It sounds like they just, they want everything the way they want it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. it's, some, it's, it's all about compromise. So would you say that that's something that is needed more in the gay community more compromise like is that a way to com- combat the obsession with perfection yes yes you should always compromise because ne- not everybody's on the same wavelength I mean mm. you just gotta meet people where they are and just accept them I'm for who they are least. and just go with that I mean I mean, you try and not to put up with somebody else's bullshit, but they got to put up with, you know, with your with bullshit. With yours, yes. And I was told by someone, sometimes we're just looking for people to put up with our bullshit. You know, we don't want to admit that, but mm-hmm. I've been mm-hmm. told that, you know. <laughs> so, um, Not always, but, you know. <laughs> most of the time. Most of the time, yeah. I've, I've the majority come across some people who... who were perfectionists quote unquote but they were the most like craziest people I've Mm. ever gone out with Mm. (laughs) it's like a I can see it being or presenting itself as them being neurotic because it exactly feel like it is an obsession uh in my personal experience with the gay community which I try to limit because yuck but (laughs) (laughs) um, I see more 
of the pursuit of the perfect perception. Mm. So a lot of men we know to be true, they may like one thing behind closed doors, but what they want to present is something that they feel like is going to be accepted. Mm-hmm. So it's like you're not really uh, you're not really pursuing perfection per se, mm-hmm. but that's what you want to present because right. that's how you want to be perceived. Right. I can dig that. Um just my own little analysis of uh dim apps, hashtag dim apps. <laughs> Especially <laughs> <Houston>. <laughs> has you know, you look at the, you read the profile and it's like are you dating because you want to date or are you dating because you you want to present that okay look at me and look at my fine ass man mm-hmm. versus am I trying to date somebody that I really want to actually be with true cuz I think yeah. some people date for a multitude of reasons yeah it could be cuz they just don't want to be by themselves they just want to get laid mm-hmm. they just want someone to cry on or show it just it's it's so fluid, you know. Yeah, so some I would, do it for love, some do yeah. it for yeah. I would, so. I would say the how to combat that would be to harken back to what you guys said not too long ago. Live in your truth mm-hmm. and like what you like. Don't worry about being judged by your friends because for let's use. The most obvious example. If you are into big boys, but you only do it behind closed mm-hmm. doors because you're worried about being judged by your homeboys, mm-hmm. are they really your homeboys? Yeah. Right. Like, right. Um, so I, I think Very the true. best it's way. Shallow. It's really shallow. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, but that's like, yeah, that's life. That's yeah. gays. They it are is shallow. What it yeah. is. I mean, you gotta accept it for what it is. You know, like I, I keep even it moving. I have a working theory that I. Even amongst <clears throat> gays, like mm-hmm. gays, don't they don't even want to support unless they see the perfect image. Yeah, right. They don't want to come to your party if they don't think it's gonna be six packs and picks. So that's why that's they put that on the flyer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's the rise of social media because everybody thinks they're a celebrity. I don't. I, I disagree. Because even before social media, it would be the same thing on those flyers. If, True. if it's a flyer yeah. posted on MySpace or if it's a flyer posted on a telephone pole, mm-hmm. they're always going to put those perfect images That's to true. get people yeah. interested. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I look at those flyers, I don't even look at the guy. I, I look to see how much the drinks are, what Listen. the cover is. <laughs> look at the address being like, is right. this going to be in Fifth right. Ward? Okay. <laughs> It's, it's like I don't know. Do you guys? Am I gonna have to Uber or can right. I park my car over yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> and, or should I Uber and I, so and that I, my car right. doesn't get stolen? Yes. And I notice there's a lot of gay men who like their own clone. Oh, especially mm. among our Caucasian friends. You know what? Mm. I don't know if you really just I'm, observe. I you know. I'm gonna put. But a I love pin the Caucasians. In don't that, get me wrong, but I do see a lot <laughs> of clones. <laughs> I want to put a yeah. pin in that because okay. I feel like that's a yeah. that's Different a whole topics. conversation yeah. in itself. Yeah. But yes, mm-hmm. I I can think of some examples where it's like I look at two guys and together like, and I'm like, wow. yeah. oh look, that's his brother, right? Like, or Bay, Bay for seven years, yeah. and it's like, yeah. yeah. Kind of incest, like yeah, because they're so, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you know, it's but like, I think that's a similar. that's a whole different yeah. thing to unpack right. that. Uh, we're not gonna do here. <laughs> I mean, just yeah, because right. I feel like that conversation, when you put yeah. some thought mm-hmm. into it, that could be a yeah. lengthy conversation. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that's gonna wrap up the main topic. So let's get into the queer query. Question. So we're gonna ask some questions. So let's go around the room. Okay. First question, what does your Instagram feed look like, if you have Instagram? (laughs) My Instagram feed looks like booty, and then Janet Jackson, and hot guys, and that's pretty much my Instagram feed. Booty, Janet Jackson, and hot guys. 
Okay. Would, feed is like, is that our page? Like what your well, page? No, no, no. When you scroll, which when you're through, scrolling, see what yeah. you're looking at. Um, lots of men from different countries. Mm. <laughs> That's what's on my feed. Okay, <laughs> they're friendlier. They <laughs> lots of Brazilian you. men. Yeah. Are you on Instagram? Yeah. Um, I haven't updated my Instagram in like five years. I don't oh, care Jesus about Christ. But well, well, what is your Facebook or whatever social media you're on? What does your feed look like on whatever you I on? do a lot of politics, oh. a lot of recipes. Oh, Jordan. It's not all about, you know, booty holes and dicks. And stuff. Oh. Me, it's a booty you hole. You know, so. I, I use, I just, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm wanting, if I'm feeling frisky, I just watch porn. But I don't, and I'm trying to do the Tinder. I just haven't had to. Oh, Tinder is the a Tinder. S- I've never been on Tinder. I, never I mean, not Tinder. Tinder. What was that? Your uh, what are we talking about? Um, we're talking about feeds on no, no, Instagram. No, 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 oh, yeah, but I was trying. And he's what, saying what how he doesn't. Yeah. He okay. I don't serve it. Uh, yeah, your like, my yeah. feed looks like hot guys, muscle men, s- muscle men, mm. some thick. Mm-hmm. Celebrities and my friends, or yeah, you know, yeah. f- friend adjacent, right? So, next question What are your top three points of hookup and or fuck buddy etiquette? So, number one for me, I'll go first is uh, hygiene, of course, hygiene, 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 hygiene for me. Be a top that is willing to give up your ass. I love tops that give up their ass. What is that even? That doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense for me. Basically, (laughs) how are they a top that gives up their ass? So you mean versatile? Be a versatile top. Okay. Be a top that's willing to let a bottom play with your asshole. Now, do you mean play with it or fuck it? Because there's oh, I don't have to fuck it. I just. I, I need to be able to touch it, see how many hairs on it, and... Taste it. Like, yeah. You know, you know, counting be, individual hairs. Like, <laughs> I, I, I want to know how many hairs are on it. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's your turn, Jordan. Um, yeah, hygiene is always number one. Um, don't just come and fall asleep. Mm. You know, uh, you, no? you beat me to it because I was gonna say number two yeah. is knowing when to take your ass home. Oh, Jesus. okay. Unless we have right. an established rapport, right. Right. and we have done but, this on multiple occasions, don't right. just assume that just because you came over and got your gut swirled mm-hmm. that now it's nap time. No, it's not nap <laughs> time. It's Uber time. No, it's time for you to go. Time. But yeah. you know what's so interesting, like. um I don't know what it is with me. Maybe because I'm more of a listener than a talk talker, but they tend to do pillow talk and like pour out their whole lives and stuff. So and then I, they, and then you I, then I, then I, you know, and I listen. To, you know, <laughs> no, I don't uh-huh. know what it is. Like they just really like to talk to me. So then after we have sex and whatever, so and then sweet. I'm the nice person. I text them a couple of days later, say, "Hey, how you doing?" And it's crickets. Mm-hmm. But you were sitting here in my bed, mm-hmm. pillow talking. You know, see that's that or, thing where armchair therapist. You know, yeah, I was gonna say that's the thing it where they, so they need a therapist. To, so right, I'm learning not to do the small talk like you with you. Just let's do our thing. Let's we do can a, when hug, it's a kiss and you go on your this way all the time yeah. on this show. When mm-hmm. it's all over, please get up and leave. Right. Oh, that's right. To the left, to the left. You know, or <laughs> when it's all over, yeah. don't be surprised when right. I get up and leave. Right. I'm gonna get my draws. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna jiggle into them. I'm gonna jiggle out the door. You don't, don't feed so me. Do not feed oh, me. I don't because feed I people. met. I had had sex with one dude, and I had some beef stew in the refrigerator, and he ate Ooh. my beef stew. What? Yeah. I had an and encounter like with a guy yeah. who left his beef stew on my dick. Oh. <laughs> okay, that that's, that's a different another topic. topic. That's another. That's another topic. Hey. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Wow. Um, so Damon, yes. No, I <laughs> no. You guys pretty much covered mm-hmm. it. Hygiene. Um, I have a thing where if you're coming over to my place, as soon as you walk in the door, take off your clothes. Let's get started. Let's do what we what you came here to do, and that's it. And you you know my rule. We discussed this last week mm-hmm. with with my rules and. In terms of um, 
that type of situation. But hygiene is important. Mm-hmm. Knowing when to leave is important. Um, thirdly, I would just say somebody who doesn't. I mean, if you're wanting to play, let's let's play. I don't need the whole texting right. situation. Let's just get it done. Because I, I'll move on to somebody else. I always I find it interesting, the terminology that we use, but that's mm-hmm. that's a different episode. Um, the last thing for me is respect. Right. Respect right. my house. Right. Respect my jaws. Respect my walls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Respect my girl. Right. Okay. Respect my whatever. You know, res- right. respect me as an individual. Mm-hmm. Um, Put some respect on it. Put some exactly. respect on it. Hey. Put some lube on it. Put some respect Ooh. on it. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Right. Last question. What's one of your unpopular opinions? Hmm. So, basically, My... it would be something that, I don't know, if you were on social media, you would get dragged for. My unpopular opinion is that I think that we should forgive Paula Dean. Who? Paula Dean. Paula Dean. Is she still with us? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Omarosa. Piggy Puddin. <laughs> I'm down with Paula Dean and Omarosa. So why should we forgive Paula Dean? Well, mm-hmm. we forgive, we've forgiven white people for worse. Mm. So sure. why should she, but why should she specifically get a pass? What did she do? she can cook. I don't remember. I and forgot. She, well, there I was, forgot. There was, there was, there was Allegations saying that she used the N word, and she said that was like back in the day when, ago. when whites what? did use that word. So why do well, we care? I mean, yeah, not everybody not uses really the N word, but yeah. you guys voted for Trump. Who was you guys? Well, you are being very general about mm-hmm. specific things, um, and it's not just that. She also was, I believe, her and her brother were sued by an employee mm-hmm. for harassment and whatnot, mm-hmm. and then there was she got caught under fire because she said she wanted to have like some old party old fashioned Ooh. plantation party mm-hmm. and have all of, all of the staff be black and dressed up in tuxedos and stuff so but she denied that wouldn't you but she Why admitted she to everything denied? else but she denied that which means well that listen you don't know listen, what I'm not standing for her I'm not taking up for her mm-hmm. but that's my unpopular Opinion. That's fine. Opinion. We challenge you on it. Okay, yeah. so Jordan. Okay, Jordan. No, I respect that. I okay, do. you know, I stand by you on that. It's, I think um, more so not that we were trying to challenge. It's just that mm-hmm. it's so random, like Paula Dean. Like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I dig it. Um, you didn't say Phaedra, so it's fine. I don't have oh. to drag. You. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, John. <laughs> so you say what's what's my unpopular opinion? Gosh. I don't really know if I understand that question because it's an opinion can be unpopular. Opinion opinion that you have that won't be okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, Mm -hmm. but you're a Trump supporter. Well, I like his policies. See, I mean that. But I, I mean, he's he's, he's like a tacky, brash New Yorker. Mm-hmm. A lot, but I like his policies. What, and not what a lot policies of people, exactly do you like? That he stands for the American people that's been forgotten since the, like the fifties. You know, mm. jobs overseas. Mm. Well, I mean, I would challenge that because churches and our, his actions don't you know. reflect that. But that's fine. That's your mm-hmm. popular opinion. So I guess so. Um, you know, Damon, what's your I, unpopular I, opinion? I can't think of an. You like white boys right now. That's I like all kinds of boys. I like all kinds of boys. That's not an opinion. It is that's for me. his attraction. Mm-hmm. I like all kinds you of boys. You have okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so I, I I really can't think of anything at the moment. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't. Feel like I get so many hot takes off. I don't have a specific Anymore. opinion about something that would be unpopular. Yes. Trying to be, I'm not trying to cop out, but when I came up with this question, I couldn't really think of anything that would be like, okay, if I say this is my opinion, then I would get dragged. So Ooh. no, <laughs> this is a judge judgment free. No, I mean, no, no, no. Well, I mean, that's, that's the I mean, yeah. definition of mm-hmm. unpopular opinion is. 
something that people are, are going to be like, no. like, you know, a Kanye thing saying slavery is, yeah. is, is a choice. That's an unpopular. Well, I think he meant like being a <laughs> victim in the mind. He didn't mean like physically. Of course I don't, he knows that's I don't, not. I'm, I don't, but yeah, but anyway, I'm not invested yeah. in Kanye, so I don't really care what he means. <laughs> yeah. I'm just using that as an example. But I don't really... I, I haven't watched Coachella yet with Beyonce. That's not an opinion. That's a fact that you haven't watched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it was on YouTube, but they they yanked it really Ooh. quick. Yeah, it was on the entire like performance was yeah. on YouTube. I mean, but they was, Beyonce yeah. 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 early in the morning. Yeah. Well, like I t- to view it. Peanut and I talked about that. You know, we we attribute all of that to Beyonce, but mm-hmm. we never really know what the story is because it could be. Sponsors and whatnot, like I don't want this streaming for free because I don't get any money off of it. So she may be like, Okay, I want it, but if you trying to get paid every time someone's watching this, Mm -hmm. then you're not taking money out of my pocket, so we're just not gonna have it available. We never really know. Um, damn, I really can't think of anything, which is odd for me. I feel like I feel like people gonna listen to this and be like, okay, they probably will be able to cite stuff that I've said and I'm like, bitch, I don't remember saying that. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a I'm a cop out on this one because I can't think of anything. Wow. I wish I could, but I think part of I think is because I'm so used to keeping my opinions to myself because I don't need an audience Which you for it. Right? I mean. So don't conflate it with me not saying what I want to say. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like my opinion, number one, needs to be known by the whole world all the time. Okay. That it, And it doesn't need to be debated. Like, I if I that. feel I this way that. about it, this is how I feel. And I don't, right. You know what I mean? As long as I'm well informed. Because that's... The, you know what? That is my unpopular opinion. That mm-hmm. everybody's opinion don't matter. That's right. All opinions don't matter. True. You know, especially I, when they're sorry. Let me say this one thing real quick. Especially when they're ill-informed. I disagree. Like, when you say something and you have an opinion on something, but it's not based in fact, you can interpret fact different ways. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know fact, your opinion is we don't need it. I think that everybody's opinion matters in some way. I mean, you may not agree with it, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't matter. It doesn't have anything to do with agreement. How you, your opinion, if you are making up your own facts to get to that opinion. Well, no, I mean, that's a different thing. If well, that's what I just said. We've all kind of become accustomed to that. That's what everybody seems to do nowadays. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you, you have a on... strong opinion... But you didn't do your Googles. Like that's Wendy different. Williams. Mm-hmm. Right. That's different than saying, yeah. this is my opinion and it differs from yours so we don't agree. That, those are two different things. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying totally different. If, you, if your opinion is when the sun is high in the sky, the sky is red. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say, no, you're not going to sit here and tell me my opinion matters. But I'm like, what facts? How did you come to this opinion? Because the facts say something different. Now, if you just say, I go outside and to me, the sky is teal. And I'll be like, okay, well, it looks a little bit more cobalt to me. Though That's different. Because we're both in the same realm of fact versus right, right. I, I pull this out of my ass. I agree. I agree. Well, you guys. So what did you, say, Damon? you were trying to. I did mm-hmm. come up with you an opinion. Oh, okay. Go for your opinion. I come think on, it'll probably opinion. be unpopular, but I'm. I'm through with RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh. I think it should be done with. God. It's. I, it, I don't I've know never how many watched seasons. It. I've always been. I'm it done. takes me so long to get into stuff. I, I've been I, meaning to watch it, but I haven't watched it since like season two. Is I haven't done? watched like, it since I, season one. Is it bad? <laughs> like, why do you feel that way? I'm, I'm just. I'm just yeah. through with it. I'm, I'm Give through. us a little bit of your review. What you feel? <laughs> I'm just seeing the same old thing. I'm not seeing anything mm-hmm. that's cutting edge. Like the house. It's the mediocre. Yeah. I don't think anybody is worthy of okay. winning that competition. Right. He mm. has a white husband. His opinions are biased. Now listen to you. Who, After you everything you just said. What? <laughs> now he does. Is. RuPaul? He does. Oh, okay. He has a white husband and his opinions are biased. But do they matter? No. See? 
<laughs> Would it be better if he brought Paula Dean on as a judge? <laughs> Everybody dressed up as butter. <laughs> as long as she cooked, brought on her, if she cooked for the girls, if she cooked for the girls, if she brought some chicken for the queens, as long as she brought on her artichoke spinach dip, then yes. <laughs> so you can break bread with this. So let me just say yeah. this: she doesn't need to be forgiven for you to enjoy her recipe. He's like, just get the recipe. Well, yeah. Category yeah. is yeah. plantation realness. <laughs> oh my god! Wow, y'all not gonna wow. let me go. That out. was good. Oh, <laughs> y'all wow. not gonna let me go out like that. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Mm. But her sons, though. Oh no. yes, especially yes. that thick one with the dark hair. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you can get it. Mm-hmm. And they southern. Yeah, they know how to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at y'all. Yeah. Y'all done moved into being fast real quick. Real fast. And in a hurry. Have you seen her sons? They're like really cute I, bubbles. They're hot. Yes. What, what's one of them's name? Jamie? I don't know Jamie. their name. And but I just kind of thought are. Jamie was a little bit on our team, though. So did I. No, I mean, the youngest you one? You no, nah, he got married with the little British spirit oh, girl. God. I'm talking about Jamie, though. Like the, the only, I know she has yeah. another son, I, I, but the only one I know is yeah. Jamie. Anyway, yeah. you guys, okay. that's going to wrap up this conversation. Yeah. I want to thank you all, right. all for Sorry. taking the time to think about this and agreeing to be on the podcast. I know for thank Jordan for and Harold. No, you've been on the podcast before. I have. And Damon. I was going to say for Jordan and Damon, mm-hmm. I assume it's your first time it is. recording yes. a podcast. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank Sitting you here us. and talking. Thank you for having us. So why don't you guys go around the room and tell the people where they can find you. If you want to be found. I do have some guests that's like, no, I'm good. You can find me at HaroldJ09 at Instagram and Twitter. whatever. Just Twitter. Yeah, just look for me. Um, I'm a little bit lame because I don't really do a lot of social media, but I do have my Facebook. You can find me at jordan.toro85 at yahoo.com or you can just look up my name or my phone number, which I'm not going to give that information. <laughs> but anyways, I was about to say, where are you going with this? <laughs> and I'm at, on Instagram. I'm uh, quez, Q-U-E-Z underscore digital on Instagram. All right, you guys. And that's going to wrap this up. All right. Bye, everybody. Hasta la vista. Well, guys, that wraps up that panel discussion. I do hope that you enjoyed it. I know that there were probably some things in there that you would not agree with or something that made you do the white man blinking gif. But, you know, it's all part of discourse. So I want to say again a big, huge thank you to my guests for agreeing to be on the show. And. For me and for this show, remember that you can go to GaySideStories.com. That is the hub for all things related to the show. You can email me if you want to get in contact with me. If you are interested in being a guest on the show, if you want me to be a guest on your show, that's GaySideStories at gmail.com. You can follow and interact on social media. It's at GaySideStories on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook.com slash Gay Side Stories. And the discussion group is hashtag Gay Side Pod. Make sure that you guys are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. If you are not already, remember I said that the show is switching hosts. So if you are subscribed on SoundCloud, I'm again, I'm going to try to continue putting the latest episodes on SoundCloud. I just don't know how that's going to work with the ban on uh, uploading with how many minutes I can upload um, since I'm not going to be a paying subscriber anymore. But the show is still on Apple Podcasts. It's now on Pippa. It is on Stitcher. It's on Google Play Music. It's on Acast. It's on TuneIn. So you guys can find it somewhere else just in case. I can't continue to put the latest episodes on SoundCloud, but I will do my best. Speaking of SoundCloud, you guys, the Sounds of the Stories playlist is still there. There is a version on Apple Podcasts, but it's not the full thing because some of those songs are 
hard to find or they're like one-off remixes and stuff like that so i'm flirting with the idea of, of putting or i should say making the apple podcast version of the playlist available we'll see but with all that being said you guys thank you so 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 much for listening i know that you don't have to you could be listening to any podcast but you take a little bit of time you take an hour and a half of your day to listen to me and i really really do appreciate you guys don't know how much it means to me so i'm gonna say goodbye and see you guys next week i'm excited about the next episode because it's a topic that i have been wanting to breach for a while and i just haven't had a chance to but i had a listener approach me and he has been very hands-on with what we're going to be discussing and i can't wait so that's all for this week you guys bye and again thank you for listening perfect